So, in today's video, I'm going to touch on something which means a lot to me. And it mainly means a lot to me because um, it was a very difficult period in my life. And that is the hermit phase. And what we call the hermit phase is like the phase that you go through when you just feel like you want to be alone. You just want to escape um, the conditions and the normal um, world you've surrounded yourself in. You're slightly your perception and your the way you view the world that you're living in has completely changed. So now you want to, um, yeah, you want to just get away from people that represent that normality to you. And you want to also, you feel like everything's so new to you, how you feel inside. It's like you've suddenly accessed different parts of your body. Suddenly emotions are locked down and now starting to like escape and sort of the locks decide to come off. Everything's being unraveled. And when so much is becoming unraveled to you, you know, it's hard just you going about living a normal day with all this happening under the surface and all this happening inside and being shown to you for the first time. So being around people and then maintaining ordinary conversations and maintaining ordinary relationships with friends, um, that, you know, friendships that basically have maintained themselves and relationships that have come about from the old you, from a you that you know, seems alien to you at the moment, given that you're changing so much and you're just discovering so many more sides to you and so many more aspects of yourself that you didn't even know were there. So, guys, it's totally normal to want to... So this is the what we call the hermit phase, where it feels, it feels like you need to be a hermit just to be able to get up and live a little more normal life after this. It seems like... Everything in your life might have come to a halt. And whereas for me, life felt this way. I felt like there was a natural progression. Like my life was going forward at a natural rhythm. And I had the narrative in my mind. And that would tick along saying, Louis, you're doing this now. Okay, let's do this. Do, 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 do. That normal voice speaking to me. And then when that voice went away, I felt like that natural, you know, progression of life of just seeing is, I'll oh, do these exams, get into sick form, get into university, now I'm going to university, do this, do this, do this, very living by the book. Even though I was always interested in spiritual things, I wouldn't exactly call myself like a normal, you know, kid growing up, but I felt like I was just ticking things off in my life. And while I've certainly had introspective experiences, I mean, you know, I, I tried psychedelics at a very young age and it gave me all this new information almost like I came into a lot of new information about myself and not so much new things I didn't know about myself but ways in which I described myself in my head I created myself molded my ego so I'd had introspection but nothing nothing on this level of every day just thinking over things from my childhood and having memories vivid memories of things that I could barely remember, there were suddenly new memories coming about. And these memories were linked with parts of my past, parts of my past which um, may have been negative or positive, but ultimately parts of my past which, until then, I had no idea that had such an effect on making me the person I am today, or driving my behaviour, driving my emotional re reactions, and the way I react emotionally to some stuff to anger at certain things, to being angry at a video game when I was younger, to then getting snappy, you know, on an de electronic device, my phone doesn't work, from, you know, remembering the first kiss I had with a girl and remembering an embarrassing moment I had with a girl, which later affected, you know, my, the first source of relationship I had. All these things, you're, you just come into reality, it's uncomfortable truths, and a lot of them are very strange. So, yeah, it's totally normal to be alone totally normal to be alone so you guys if you're finding yourself in this th in this space where like for me I felt like my the life I previously had to sort of stopped and that sort of ticking along the natural progression has sort of stopped and suddenly whoom, I just all that forward momentum is gone inwards and all that forward momentum of moving feeling like you're moving forward in life you realize I was just I'm a character I was controlling my life pushing myself forward but now oh I've, co I've come inwards and you've got to understand, part of that inwards is because life isn't meant to be push, push, push. Life is come in and then it naturally unravels or you go into flow. 
And I hadn't really experienced these states, maybe gleaned at them a few times, maybe playing sports, maybe doing a few, maybe like special events in my life, or, but I had never really hit into a flow. And this is what you're starting to do, you're starting to unravel what's underneath. It's like if you've been running a marathon your whole life, you've been running and running and running with a backpack on. It's better to stop running for a moment and untie this backpack that's strangled around you, all these knots. It's best to try and untangle it, untangle yourself from the backpack, and then when you run again, it'll be effortless, it'll be easy. If you're done doing it for so long with a heavy rucksack on, restraining you know, your movements, your flexibility. So it's key to be alone right now in order to get that rucksack off and to go where you're headed or somewhere completely new and more meaningful and authentic to you, much faster, much easier. So I hope some of you are sort of understanding or can at least relate to this kind of place you might be coming in now. And if you are, it's likely you're at the early stages of your awakening and you're coming into the hermit phase. And um, what I can say about the hermit phase is that be prepared, you know, just like an animal goes in to hibernate for a long time, be prepared to not straight away be uh, getting over your problems and flying away in life. It may happen. It didn't happen for me, but it may happen for you. But the hermit phase is really a time of inf revealing information about yourself and also taking a dive and discovering new information. Maybe things like spirituality that you're really fascinated with. I was really fascinated with uh, ancient Hindu practices, with Kundalini Yoga. I was really fascinated with seeing how I was connected to the full moon and the new moon and how this would change my energy. We're doing meditations about opening chakras. We not only have the seven chakras up our spine the, where the Kundalini flows, but we have hundreds of chakras all around our body which we can focus on and visualize and open. There were so many things I was getting into, things I'd never heard of before at all. So things that are totally strange to, uh, compared to my previous interests, which is mainly around sport, politics, which I went on to study at university. So this is all very bizarre. And I took way more interest in this than I did my even my university course. So it had me doing pretty badly in 2017 and 2018. So guys, We'll get into why being alone is actually a really good thing. And the first thing I have to say is that it absolutely builds your groundedness and your emotional infrastructure. Think of yourself, think about how many people that don't wake up or choose to not go deep into their emotions and do inner work and do clearing and change some of that trauma and make, you know, change, get rid of that dense, low vibrational energy. Think about how they have a very poor structure to be building their life experiences on or going about into the world on. Just like if you're building a house, if it's a very poor structure, no matter how good you build the rest of it, no matter how expensive the rest of the bricks are and how expensive the windows are and the rest of the architecture, it's likely to fall or it's likely to have some severe, you know, to have some severe collapse or have collapses in the future. And that's because they haven't, people haven't done the work to see what's lurking beneath their subconscious and see what's lurking in their past and maybe even the past, the karma they carried with them from past lives as an abstract idea you could also play with. Because I don't think the hermit phase, and I think that idea is imp in, important because there are going to be times where you think, how did I get all this darkness inside me? Where is this all coming from? And it's likely that it's come from past lives, or come from karmic debts that haven't been paid back. Maybe from your ancestors, or past lives that could have been anyone, animals, humans. You never know. So keep an open mind about what's happening. Don't all relate it directly to you. It's likely not your fault. In fact, it's a blessing you're experiencing this, although it won't feel like it at the time. But you're getting ready to build that emotional infrastructure. And that's why being alone is good. Because a lot of people have to rely on being around people, fulfilling up emotional needs. People either want attention or validation from others. So being able to be alone. And it's so powerful not only to be alone and not freak out. Because you want to be alone, but you might feel bad about it. I felt bad about it. I felt like I only had a limited amount of time at university. I was spending all of it just cooped up in my room. I was like... 
t- telling myself off. Why am I, you know, why why don't I get out there and talk and have fun like a lot of other people do? It seems so easy for them. But I was just coming into so much information, so much awareness about myself. I feel like I couldn't. And I wish I had accepted that more and known then, like I talk about in other videos, the resistance just makes it far worse. So, but, but it, just saying resistance doesn't, makes it worse doesn't mean it's easy to also surrender to either. So I completely empathise with you if you feel, find it very hard to be alone at the moment. But I hope what I'm saying now helps, that it's very important, f- discovering about yourself and building your emotional infrastructure, from knowing how you react, what you're like, what your emotions are like, what you're likely to delve towards if you're feeling bad, you know, what your past history has taught you about who you are, which is everyone's different, everyone's got that unique perspective. What's also really important is not only, you know, like I said, so it's great to be able to be on your own, build that, but also to accept being on your own, which a lot of people can't, which ultimately is the way to get out of that, is accepting and yielding to this process is the most important thing we can do. And it's the time now to really yield to what's going on. Because it'll be a matter of time in a few years, you'd have just, you'll be like me, you'll just wished you'd have done it earlier. Because yielding is just, it just, it's like you're being taken for a ride. And, you know, before the ride's even begun, you're like, oh, I want it to be better, I want it to be a better ride than this, I'm not comfortable, I'm da 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 But later you'll go over and you'll see how amazing the ride is. And in fact, it gets even better the more you yield to it. But it's very hard because, you know, if you're not into the information like I was initially about what was going on, I didn't want to let go of who I was. I was very scared to let go of and go into... So I was already upset about being on my own, just feeling like I couldn't even socialise with people because I was coming into so much information. There were so much things inside me which were distracting myself from being, being able to listen and be a good friend to someone else. Um... So there was that, but there was also, you know, so much, you know, that I, d- I wanted to also cling to. And I was in a state of resistance, which made everything so much harder. But if I had just let go, let go, let go, just imagine myself being on this invisible ride. You know, there's good, there'll be other ways you can imagine it. And I'll do another video on ways you can shift your mindset and make it all easier. But I've just known just to let go and let what's coming away from me go. Let all these things, just let it go and sink deeper into myself into the process. It would be amazing. And I really trust that you guys can do that, please. Um, because it will make a world of difference. Guys, also, being alone from everyone is like you're able to hit a reset switch in your life. And this is just like what the awakening is. It's just like a reset button. It's just like, you know, um, virus protection on the software. You're hitting that, you're cleaning out viruses. Um, you're not only clearing out low vibrational energy inside yourself and trauma and pain and things that are holding you back, limiting beliefs, things that are stopping you from having the freedom to live your life exactly how you want and manifest exactly what you want. But it's also a time where you can look back on the influences you have around you affecting who you are now. It's not just all about, you're not to blame for everything in your life. We can control our reactions, but we're not to blame for everything. And as you're starting to, the new new you starting to come through, the new you starting to come through, show some hints, you know, you're seeing glimpses of your potential. You've got to align yourself with what your potential is. Align your... So, sorry about the disturbance there. Um... You might be wondering, Louis, why the hell have you, are you filming outside um, while you're holding your phone on one of the windiest days of the year? Well, funnily enough, it kind of links back to what I was saying earlier um, in the video. Well, my phone um, ran out of storage, great, you know, we've all been there, very annoying. And my laptop's also a software needed for rebooting and having a lot of problems. So I decided to come for a walk, you know, to just kind of, kind of surrender to those negative emotions I was feeling, being very frustrated, etc. But while I, while I, you know, as soon as I started walking, walking, I started to feel better. And um, it kind of reminded me of the point I was saying earlier. While you're building this emotional infrastructure for being alone, you know, when, uh, if you had a hard day and you have lots of people around you, lots of agony aunts, lots of people you can complain to, 
it doesn't really make you question, you know, the habit that you have of complaining all the time, you know, complaining too much. And uh, yeah, it reminded me of when I was alone and when many of you will be alone during this hermit phase, you begin to question the typical sort of emotional reactions you start having. And you can find different ways of dealing with stress and dealing with ways that, you know, you wouldn't otherwise do if you weren't alone. You know, you wouldn't take the time. You know, misery love, loves company is a saying. And, you know, if you've got people you can complain to, then you're never going to stop complaining. But if you're on your own and you're questioning what makes me a good person, what makes me a good friend, you know, other people, there's a lot of positive people, high vibe people, and you're slowly becoming a high vibe people, person, sorry, that uh, God is windy. <laughs> you know, slowly starting to become a high vibe person, though you're starting to take on characteristics of other high vibe people. And, you know, one of that is not complaining. You know, people that are very positive are able to quickly reframe things. So while you're alone, and while I just was then, alone with my frustration, deciding to come for a walk, you know, I already have a way, I've already conceived of a way, part of my emotional infrastructure for dealing with stress, for dealing with things that have annoyed me, is to come out to walk, to go into nature. Um, and to ultimately deal with it on my own, because you're learning now while you're alone, and especially dealing with a lot of, you know, it's a very hectic time, you know. So I don't, I don't, I feel for you guys that are really going through, you're getting rid of a lot of your trauma now. I've done a lot of my clearing, but there's no doubt a lot to come in future, but I'm over that initial difficult hermit phase. But if you're able to cope with all this on your own, I mean, seek help, absolutely, if you can. You know, thank God there's a lot of resources now on the internet and a lot of people, community, because there is a place to complain. There is a place to be honest with how you're feeling. But I think anyone that spends time on their own begins questioning what is a high vibe characteristic? What is what would make me a good friend going forward after this time I've spent, you know, alone evaluating different characteristics and different emotional tendencies I have. And, uh, you know, that's the point I was getting to before my phone cut off out of storage. It was the point that, um, you know, you need to think about the kind of people that you don't want. Now you're starting to align clear, out low vibrational energy and then ascend in an emotional sense to a more joyous, harmonious state, but also a sensitive state. You've got to honor that state when you do reach it and find ways to protect it. And being alone, honestly, is a, a way you can just stay protected for a long time. You know, there's a lot of people I come into contact with. You know, there are people in my family. I felt much better just being on my own. So why not be on your own? You know, don't feel the pressure of society to always be with people. I respect people that go to the cinema and enjoy a film, you know, serenely, than people that go to the pub and just argue and, you know, ultimately don't really contribute to making, to raising the vibe of the planet, you know? Then a lot of people could do with being alone. And uh, it's ultimately getting you to become a more well-rounded, emotionally strong, grounded person so that you can support others and you can do healing work with others because that is just so fulfilling when you can help other people um, with all that you've learned. So you've got to go through this initial pain, you've got to go through this being alone. But uh, yeah, it really does mold you into the person you will become and it's something you'll keep with you for a long time and you'll look back to. I remember when I was alone, I certainly do. I always think, oh, I remember now I've done that, I've got through all those negative things on my own. Even when at times where I felt like I was going to die, I felt like I was going to go crazy, felt like, you know, everyone was looking down at me and judging me. Obviously they weren't, but that was sort of the negative characteristics that I had coming up that I had to purge out. So that's where I'm going to end it today, guys. I'm going to continue this walk, enjoy things. And uh, just a shout out, anyone that's feeling alone, feeling like they don't have any friends, you know, certainly I felt like that for a long time. I felt like it was a bad thing, but until you've gone through it, and like with uh, manifesting things, you've got to not be resistant to it because anything you're resistant to, you're likely to stay there and it'll likely hinder you from changing. But uh, just accept it. And the more you can accept it, then, you know, more people will naturally gravitate towards you. It's not like you need to do a whole lot and completely change yourself. But there's certainly things you can get rid of, things you can release, um, things you can discover about yourself. And people will naturally gravitate towards someone who's emotionally stable, you know, emotionally grounded, someone who's not too reactionary. People are just naturally interested and intrigued by someone like that. Someone who's not just following, you know, what everyone else does and says. And that's ultimately where you end up. So bless you all. Stay well. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Goodbye.